Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So I've recently designed a system to send push notifications to your phone from any microcontroller unit. Super simple and super easy. And it'll run on iOS, Android, and you even have a web panel. So I'll have a table of contents down below. You can skip to whatever part of the video you would like. But first of all, I wanna show you how it works. Well, it's very simple. You set up a microcontroller unit with some sort of a sensor. This is a motion sensor, so I'm putting my hand in front of it. And we get a notification, motion sensor, living room sensor motion detected. So we could actually zoom in and I'll show you again. So my hand was already in front of it and you can see that it sent the push notification. Now, if we open the application inside, we do a quick refresh, we can see everything that's been happening inside and we could also uh, delete these. So I have it motion stop to let me know that motion stop, but not to send me a notification every time the motion stop. There's a lot of customization to the sensors, the names and everything. And I've done the code and it's gonna be very simple to follow along. I did it for just about anybody to be able to do it. And that was the reason why I'm also making this video. However, you don't have to use the Android or uh, iOS application, uh, but if you wanted push notifications, then obviously you're gonna have to use a phone, but you could also just use it with the web panel if you wanted to. So before we jump in, everything here is going to be linked down below and I'll show you the exact configuration and where to solder everything. We have an ESP 8266 and we have the ESP 32s and I've done the code for both of them so you could find it on GitHub in the link down below and we're going to go through the documentation and also showing you how to flash and set this up whether it's a temperature sensor or even a motion sensor just like this this won't even cost you five dollars here so the first thing you want to take a note of here with the motion sensor is you want to set it up just like this this is the least I think amount of sensitivity currently and also with the uh, least amount of delay which is going to be a minimum of three seconds so if you don't know what you're doing just set it this way right in the beginning now once we hold it like this you want to take note of the top right corner which is this right here now some of these will come with pin headers which means it'll come with one of these and you're gonna to want to bridge the lower two here as you can tell mine didn't but it came with pads so what I ended up doing is just uh, putting solder to bridge uh, the middle one with the left one which would be the high side or they're calling it the H here so that's what you want to do here next is the configuration of the wires now this is actually very important because this thing states that it runs 3.3 volts and these output 3.3 volts, but this board here could also output five volts and I'll explain how in a bit here. Now, if you power this on with 3.3 volts, it will be absolutely unreliable and you can't use it. Just constantly, just false alarms. So what you wanna do is on this board right here, which again, I'll have linked down below, is you wanna find the V in pad, which is basically five volts that's coming from the USB here. So that's actually the five volts coming in from the USB. And where we'd wanna connect that is the VCC, which is gonna be five volts. This is actually five volts. Then the ground is gonna be the black wire here. So you can find any ground pad, you're usually right next to the V in right there. And for the signal, which is going to be the way they talk to each other, or they call it the out here, this middle one right here, the yellow one, should go to pin D22, and I'll have that in the documentation as well. It's all the way up here, D22, and just like that, we have that configured. Now, it's very, again, very important to put this on a five volt uh, rail, or else it'll be un unreliable, really. So that's all set and done. Now let's go ahead and jump into the documentation and see how to flash this guy. All right guys, so first of all, let's go ahead and talk about the documentation. We're quickly gonna go through it, but make sense of it. And it should be very simple to follow along. We're also gonna take a look at the example code and actually install it. Now, the first thing you need to do is to generate a token. And the way to do that is by creating an account. However, before you make an account, you need to take something into consideration. How are you going to be logging in with your phone? Whether you're gonna make a normal account or sign in with Google or sign in with Apple. That's gonna play a big role for everything to be synced. So think about it before you create an account on the web panel here. So for example, I'm going to be logging in with the Apple login. So I'm gonna go ahead and create my account with Apple here. So I'm just gonna click the Apple button. Everything's been approved and verified here. Uh, it took ages, but I got it done. And I'm very proud of myself for that. <laughs> so once you're in, very simple stuff. We're gonna go to the token and code. Here's token and documentation. Uh, more stuff will be added later on. This is your token. Make sure you don't share this uh, with anybody. And I'll probably set up a, a button here to uh, renew your token so you get a newer one uh, if something happened to your token. So right now I don't mind because I'll just renew it. So here's my token. I'm going to keep that open for now. Let's go back to the documentation, which is again this link here. So I've gone ahead and zoomed in so it makes a little bit more sense here. So here it just tells you just screenshots and stuff. Uh, so grab your token. Now you can grab, again, your token from the web panel and or the application. You could just click on this and then it'll pop up and you can just click and uh, it'll copy it to your clipboard. API token, I just showed you that. 
Uh, the example code is here. I have example code for the ESP32, A266, and Python code. So if you wanted to run that on anything Python, that's also available. I wrote the functions for you. So sending notifications is very simple. All you got to do is put your token and call the request, and I'll show you how to do that. So the token is going to go on the, on the line that says token right here. And the static request, which we're going to cover later on, there's two types of functions I wrote in these files, and they're very simple. One, you could pre-fill all the information in the beginning of the file, and that's good for static stuff. Like, for example, a motion sensor. When it detects motion, you, it just says detected motion. So you would be able to fill that stuff already in the beginning of the file, not have to worry about it later on when you call it. For example, you'll see lines that says the title, and you put motion sensor, description, the living room motion sensor, the color and the color is very important. You could choose one of these colors here. If you if you choose something else, it'll default to red. Uh, grouping of the notifications don't really care about that right now, but you can play around with that. Now this is very important. The notify part is very very important. If you misspell it, everything will crash. So the notify part is basically, uh, do you want it to send push notification? Now a push notification is when it makes your phone vibrate. Uh, those are called push notifications. So basically here it says, do you want a push notification from the sensor? You could choose yes or no. And why would you choose no? Well, let's just say you just want a sensor to update every five minutes, but you don't want to get a notification every five minutes, but you still want it to be written in your application and or your web panel. Um, so that's when you would set it to false. So it doesn't send you the push notification, but it'll still send you the notification uh, or the information inside your app and or web panel. So if you fill this up in the beginning of the file, which again, I'll show you in a bit, you could just call it with a send static. And the dynamic request is very nice because you can do everything in just one sh one line of code here. And I don't know why I put the static request, but I just put it there for fun, I guess. Uh, so send custom. Uh, again, it's the same parameters, but you just call it like this uh, instead of calling it like this. So you'd say... Uh, temperature sensor. This is good for dynamic data, by the way. So for example, temperature sensor that's constantly changing in temperature. Uh, this is the kind of request you want to call here. And you could just put your temperature here, the color, and to notify or push notification, whether it's true or false. Also, case sensitivity does matter on true and false. Keep that in mind. That's very important. Um, and again, if you screw this up, the whole app will crash or your ESP32 will crash. And uh, just available colors, I just have that down here. So let's go ahead and jump to the code now. Okay, so first thing you want to do is you actually want to go ahead and open your Arduino IDE here and create a new sketch. Let's actually set this up right here. All right, so I'm gonna, I've created a new sketch. As you can tell, it's an empty sketch here. Uh, what we want to do first is you want to make sure you have the correct library installed for your ESP32 so you're able to flash it and everything works great. So what you want to do is you want to go to File, then you want to go to Preferences, and down here, additional board manager, you want to put this link in here. And where you find that link, let me just close this, is right over, oh, I haven't uploaded it yet. But it'll be in the example, for, it'll be right here in this code right here. So it'll be uh, right under the Wi-Fi. So you could actually just copy it. And once you get it from the file, you can go ahead and paste it right here. And then you could just click OK. Next, you're going to want to go to Tools. You want to go to boards. It might look different than mine right here right now, but you're going to go tools and board right here. Forget what it says after, but make sure you go to board, board manager. Wait for this thing to load. It might take a while if this is the first time you put that link inside. Then you want to go here and type ESP32. And once you do that, then you just click install and let it install. Actually, that's the thing that'll take a while. So just let that install. Now, once that's installed, so we're going to go ahead and grab our code. So I'm going to move this off to the side. And here's our code. I'm going to click raw and control all control C. So I just copy paste everything basically. And I'm just going to paste everything into my IDE here. So just like that. So now that complete code is inside our IDE here. Next thing we want to do is we want to go to tools board. Make sure you put ESP32 Arduino and it's going to be the first one where it says ESP32 dev module. Very important. You do that. And leave everything default. Don't worry about anything. Maybe the COM port. Once you connect it, you'll probably have to choose the COM port. And uh, yeah, you probably, you see like right now I don't have it connected. So I can't choose anything. Once I connect it, then I'll be able to choose. So yeah, we'll do that once we're about to flash. So now let's go ahead and get started here. So the Wi-Fi router and the password, I'm going to keep for a little bit later. But that's all the first thing you want to do. So I just don't want you guys to see my stuff. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and grab my token. So I'm going to push this to the side. I'm going to go here, copy my token and and just bring it back here so i'm just going to double click paste it okay that's good my sensor i've already soldered it everything's connected 
Uh, we're not doing anything with the static here, so we could completely ignore that part. And down here in the va in the void in the in the loop part, basically, in the loop function here, <clears throat> what we want to do is we have send custom. So this is when motion is detected. So it's a motion sensor. So I just left it there. So I'm just gonna say um, living room motion detect. So I'm gonna fix that up a little bit. I don't like that. And I want this to be hmm, orange. So I want that to be orange. And I do want the notification. So now here, if the motion has stopped, then what do we want? Motion sensor, we'll just say living room motion stopped. And you know what? I want this to be true. I want it to also let me know when that happens. And <laughs> that's about it. So let's flash it. Now flashing it is a bit tricky. Now we're going back to the basics with uh, the ESP32s. Now, if you have a shitty USB cable, you say you won't be able to have this thing run at all because when it boots up it just pulls a lot of amperage and it has a voltage spike and it just resets itself so you want to get yourself a proper usb or use some sort of a power supply to give it five volts from the v in very important you do that or else you keep having these weird errors that says reset 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 and i'll explain what i mean hopefully i could find a crappy usb so you could see the kind of error we're gonna get so now let's go ahead and plug in the ESP32. So an another thing to take into consideration when we're about to flash it right now is you have to find the boot button, which you it'll say boot, and just keep pressing it. And I'll, I'll explain why, because it won't just flash easily. You have to like time it really perfectly for some reason. I don't know why it does that. So I've gone ahead and plugged it in now. So my ESP32 is plugged in. I go back to tools. Oh, look, it already detected my COM3. Again, it's already sending because I already had that code in there. So just like that. And now we're going to go ahead and click upload. So we'll just save it, whatever. And as you can tell, um, which I'm in the way right now, but it, here, I'll just make this smaller just like that. So you can see right now it's compiling down here and we want to keep an eye on when it starts uploading and keep our finger on the boot button, not holding it. We just wait for, for it to finish and so now it's about to finish. As you can tell, it's connecting. So I want to keep clicking it until I see it stop and then I let go. And then I keep clicking and then I stop and then I wait for it and I keep clicking. And when I see it just stop there, I let go or just press three times and then just let go. Eventually it'll pick up maybe now. Yeah, there you go. You see that? It's just trial and error. Just keep pressing let go when you see the, the, the progress bar stop down there in the orange. And now we have flashed it. Okay. And it's good. So now what we can do is we can click on this right here. Uh, I'll actually lower this little this little icon right there. And we could actually see it trying to connect. Oh, I forgot to put my Wi-Fi. That's why. So if you have something wrong with your Wi-Fi and uh, you put the wrong Wi-Fi stuff, this is the this is what you're gonna see right here. And if you're not getting anything, make sure you put 115200. All right. So I've just installed my Wi-Fi username and password. And uh, yeah, sorry, I forgot about that earlier. All right, and now we can go ahead and click this again. So we can see we already connected and I got an IP address. And now the timer is going to just wait five seconds for it to start sending anything. So when these, when these first initialize, they're going to send false positives for like the first minute and then they stabilize. So I'm going to move this away from myself just a bit. So you can tell when you get HTTP response code 200, that means that everything is working and you're actually sending and you can actually hear it currently. It's just going crazy on my phone. And the reason why it's going crazy right now is because I put true to when it stops motion and when it detects motion. So let me go ahead and clear those. So everything has calmed down now and the motion sensor is right in front of me right here. It'll probably go off again. Yep, it's gonna go off again, there we go. All right, so we'll just give it a bit here. And now if I put myself in front of it, so it just rebooted for some reason, which is fine. Motion detected, we got motion detected. And that's really it. And now we get our motion stuff and everything on the app. And if we actually take a look at the, let's move this over. So if we look at our admin panel and we go to the dashboard here, we could actually see all of these going on. You have clear old notifications. Let's just clear all of the notifications. Now, obviously you won't get a push notification on the web format, but on your phone, but here you could just refresh. Uh, I might do some sort of a live static refresh in a way and uh, we'll figure that out. So I'm gonna put my hand in front of the sensor right now. I just put my hand in front of the sensor and if we refresh, we see motion. Remember how we did it orange? So that picks up as orange. And when it stops, we should also get a, 
message there we go so we made that as blue so living room motion has stopped and you could delete these if you wanted to and that is all there to it so you can actually access these through your phone and uh, see them and you also get notified and i really hope you guys enjoyed it uh everything is linked down below also the parts here are linked down below they won't even cost you five bucks to play around with and um, i'll have more projects and stuff like this available and make sure you check out my patreon support this channel all this is free of charge as you can tell there's no ads i don't plan on putting any kind of ads on there yeah and make sure you check out my patreon that'd be super awesome because later on if the traffic is too much i'm gonna have to charge like five bucks or something and if you're my patreon i'll give you vip access to everything i'm about to release and there's a lot more projects i'm about to release as well so yeah come join my patreon that'd be super awesome and i do some crazy cool stuff there you get some awesome perks and i'll see you guys in the next one peace